Hello, everyone. Ryan Rodriguez back on another episode of Cal Maritime's Career Services Connecting Keelhauler Show. Today, we are joined by Brad Westlin, an MT grad from the class of 2012 and an MSTEM grad of the class of 2021, our second dual grad uh, of Cal Maritime here. Brad, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to speak with us. Thanks for the invite. Happy to be here, Ryan. Nice to meet you. You as well. All right. So Brad currently works as the Director of New Business Development for Stabbert Maritime, a company based out of Seattle, and his location is still in the, in, in the Bay Area. So kind of, you know, helping him out down here. Um, and this is a position he started in January 2022. So fresh, fresh into this role. Um, prior to working at Stabbert, Brad worked for 14 years with AmNav Maritime in various roles, both sailing and shoreside. So um, before and before we get into the career path, Kind of stuff just kind of want to talk about cal maritime and, and what made you choose cal maritime for undergrad and then your masters sure yeah thanks for the introduction so i chose uh, cal maritime after i actually already started working in the industry so a little bit of a reverse path than most uh straight out of high school i'm fortunate in that uh, a few fam uh, family members are are in the industry and have been in the industry uh, from my uncle to my cousin, and uh, my father even did a real short stint on uh, tugboats as well. So uh, I was well aware of the industry, uh, and I started out on tugboats in San Francisco Bay. And uh, I was fortunate after about two years working on tugs to have the opportunity to, to go up to a shipyard and take delivery of a brand new uh, harbor tug. And the crew that I was with, uh, I was the deckhand, but the captain, the mate, and the engineer were all recent. CMA grads over the previous two or three years. And uh, they really inspired me to get to know what Cal Maritime was all about, the opportunity that Cal Maritime offered, and really the ability to fast track myself to become a captain of a tugboat, which was my end goal at the time. And so I was fortunate uh, early on to be exposed to Cal Maritime, living locally and working for a local tug company. And uh, through those connections and relationships, I went to Cal Maritime and applied and was uh, fortunate enough to, to be accepted into the NT program in uh, 2008. Nice. As far as the master's degree goes, it's pretty self-explanatory. When you're uh, working in the industry and you work your way into a shoreside position, uh, there's lots of uh, different uh, graduate programs out there. And uh, when it comes to graduate programs that also have a uh, flavor of maritime, uh, Cal Maritime uh, grad uh, MSTEM program really spoke to me, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So it was a uh, it was a good choice. Uh, timing worked out well, and I'm happy to have done it. Sweet, sweet. So then, um, especially for someone that went uh, went to college after starting an industry and stuff, and you talked about it a little bit, and then even with the masters, um, where did you where have you seen your degrees being like particularly beneficial uh, in your career? You know, whether it be knowledges that you gained through school or advancement that it helped you maybe kind of accelerate and stuff. Yeah, that's a good question. The maritime industry is a really unique industry in that you don't have to go to college to. Uh, to, to join it. So that's a little contradictory to, to, the, to the audience I'm speaking to and my own past. But the reality is I, I go around and speak to local high schools uh, and talk to uh, uh, sophomores and juniors in high school that aren't sure what they want to do with their career. And I tell them that the maritime industry is a really uh, fruitful industry that whether you go the college route or you don't, you can provide a, a really good income for yourself, uh, an exciting career, and it's filled with opportunity and there's a huge need. And so uh, for me, going to Cal Maritime just offered me the ability to accelerate and fast track uh, into the positions that I wanted to uh, work my way up to, mainly becoming a tugboat captain, which I did, uh, I think, in 2015. So about three to four years after uh, graduating with my undergraduate degree. Nice. Nice. All right. So now we're going to jump to AMNAV since you, you were there for, for quite a while and you had various roles with them. Um, how did you like kind of uh, choose AmNav, and then how did you decide when you were looking for different opportunities, you know, within the company to kind of move around? And um, when I was looking at your LinkedIn, it kind of looked like sometimes you were juggling multiple roles uh, within the company. So, kind of how did you uh, how did you do that? Yeah, sure. Happy to talk about AmNav. AmNav is a fantastic company, tugboat company in San Francisco Bay. It's been around for for uh, over fifty years, and uh, it's the largest tug company on San Francisco Bay. 
And uh, when I joined there, uh, I uh, started as a deckhand and went to school while continuing to work there on and off on the tugs and then had the opportunity after graduating to go to sea on some offshore tows for AMNAV uh, up to Alaska, down to Mexico and out on the Pacific. And that really opened my eyes to the opportunities that were out there. Uh, but simultaneously uh, being a, a relatively small company in uh, the greater scale of, of uh, tug companies along the West Coast, uh, uh, the shoreside staff, which is filled with a lot of uh, multifaceted, uh, really, really exceptionally talented managers, all, all wear multiple hats. And so uh, when I saw an opportunity to come shoreside and to step into a handful of roles, I jumped at it. Uh, it's my uh, personality to always look for a new opportunity, a new challenge. And so it really was just a natural fit. The leadership team at AMNAV, uh, namely uh, Milt Merritt, uh, gave me the opportunity to step in uh, and grow into a number of roles. Uh, and that was, um, um, that was uh, invaluable. So when I first uh, came shoreside, uh, while also still maintaining a role as a, a captain on the vessels, uh, I learned the uh, HSQE side of the business, which is a critical element to any maritime business and uh, worked my way up in that uh, role uh, and then transitioned over to uh, operations as a port captain uh, overlooking the entire fleet of vessels and operations from um, uh, the Bay Area down to Southern California and all the way up to uh, Seattle. Uh, and then most recently moved into a commercial role and had an opportunity to work with the team on uh, customer relations, uh, customer building, and and uh, and um, uh, new markets, uh, and that really led me up to my transition uh, from AmNav to uh, my current uh, uh, employer now. Nice, nice. So, um, and st sticking kind of with AmNav because you were, you know, you were, I mean, bouncing around like all different departments and everything, getting a lot of, uh, a lot of great experience. What were some particular skills that you could identify that kind of stood out that were consistent through your various roles that helped you succeed? Yeah, you know, more so than skills, I would say uh, it was uh, character traits uh, that I were, was able to witness with other leaders and other team uh, teammates. Uh, to, to manage multiple roles or to, to have the opportunity to work in uh, multiple uh, sectors of the business, you have to have an open mind and you have to be open to, to new challenges and to thinking outside the box and to, uh, and to not uh, have that closed mindset of, well, that's somebody else's job. And that's just naturally the way I operate. And AmNav uh, is a company where um, everybody has an opportunity to, 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 to go as far as they want. So if you have a desire as a brand new deckhand and you want to become a captain, that management team at that company does everything in their power to promote you to, to work up to that uh, position that you desire. And um, I had that opportunity both shoreside and on the vessels. And I just was uh, in a position to, um, to capitalize on it, to take advantage of the graduate program at Cal Maritime, and and to uh, excel uh, in in learning new parts of the business, and and just really working to provide um, uh, benefit to the group uh, in whatever arena I was asked to be a part of. Sweet, sweet, yeah, no, I think those those character traits are are the big things that that definitely help. Yeah, you. hard. I mean, hard skills. Mm -hmm. Cal Maritime does a great job of teaching you uh, it, it, on the deck side and the engine side, sailing out at sea. It it really teaches you to to uh, be trustworthy, dependable, and to be uh, prompt. And those are all traits that. Uh, if you go to Cal Maritime and you go work in, in any industry other than the maritime industry, it'll serve you really well. And um, those are the traits that um, or skills that having uh, uh, at AMNAV uh, were uh, were of uh, benefit to me uh, long term. Definitely, definitely. So then, uh, what were what were some of the favorite things that you had while working at AMNAV, and then what were some of maybe the more challenging things that you encountered when you were there? Sure. Yeah, I, I you probably group those together, fun and challenging. <laughs> true, uh, true, definitely. Uh, you know, depending on the situation. So uh, in that um, 
uh, and uh, over the years at AMNAV, I had the opportunity to to both uh, uh, sail on the vessels and manage shoreside offshore uh, projects that uh, are really one off. So the the projects that come to mind for me uh, were uh, working with a great team of mariners and managers. Uh, at AMNAV uh, to uh, successfully complete multiple rescue tows of ships that were stranded offshore. Uh, we did a uh, we did a, a, a one month tow off of uh, off of Mexico where the ship had suffered engine casualties and and the ship was in uh, in need of a rescue and so uh, we rallied a crew I think within 48 hours and and when you work for a great team and with a great team it, it makes it you know uh, the challenge fun. Yep. And so that's an example. Uh, we've done a lot of work with the United States Coast Guard uh, uh, when there were vessels that were offshore of San Francisco Bay that needed to be brought in. And so uh, those challenges of, of, of working with the bar pilots, the agents, the customer, the salver uh, company, and our own uh, leadership group um, to get the job done safely, efficiently, and successfully uh, are the top challenges that come to mind that I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, during my time at AMNAV. Nice. So now, now we'll move away. And a question we always get is like, you know, if I get a, a position, like how long do I have to stay there or whatever? And so you were at AMNAV for 14 years. So what made you finally decide to make the jump over to Stabbert Maritime? And, and then what are you doing in your new role as a director of new business development? Sure. Yeah. So at Stabbert Maritime, director of new business development, I've been given the opportunity to really work uh, at uh, building out the the current business and 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 working on customer relations with our existing customers, while also looking at new markets and new opportunities for the group to uh, to enter into. Uh, Stabber Maritime is a family owned company out of Seattle uh, on Lake Union, and uh, they're uh, uh, they're a great company that's in a lot of areas of the maritime industry that I never. Uh, participated in prior. And that was one of the, the big reasons I made the jump to Stabbert was to, to, to have an opportunity to go into science and research, to go into subsea um, exploration, ocean mining, uh, um, cable A, uh, working for the Navy, uh, Department of Defense. There's, there's a, 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 a number of, of sectors of the business that Stabbert really excels at. And the opportunity to join a really fantastic leadership team, an amazing operations team, some awesome one-off uh, vessels, ships, and a great crew. It, it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Nice, nice. Um, and then, and thinking about both AMNAV and, and Stabber, and we kind of actually were talking about this a little bit before we started recording. Um, it's pretty generally clear of like, if you're a Mariner, what is that? job you're looking for right out of college. Um, but for like IBL, GSMA students, um, what would be at both of those companies kind of some types of roles that a new Cal Maritime grad would be looking for? So that's a that's a really open-ended question. And it's a great question. And it's something I talk to high school students about before they even join Cal Maritime or go in the industry. And and really it boils down to to your personality, what you want to see for yourself in your future. And ultimately, where are you going to go work and and have fun doing it? And uh, you know, you could be working for the greatest company on earth, and if you're not having fun doing it, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, at the most recent um, Cal Maritime Career Fair, talking with some of the uh, students that are getting ready to graduate, uh, you know, there was certain parts of the industry where you could tell they were just really excited. And so, I encourage all uh, future graduates to take a hard look at what part of the industry excites them, find out the companies that are in those parts of the industry and just initiate a conversation with those companies uh, stating your uh, interest in that part of the industry and why that company is special to you and you think you'd be a great fit. Uh, as far as uh, special uh, skills and traits, a lot of those are, are learned uh, once you've started the job. So. From, from an MT perspective graduate, uh, debt graduate, Cal Maritime prepares you really well to, to work in an unlimited third mate role. But most of the time you go work for a company that's in a very specific sector of the market, whether that's 
harbor tugboats, offshore tugboats, marine construction, or uh, oil tankers. And so when you join those companies, they have a whole nother set of, of programs and trainings that have to take place for you to become qualified to do that work. And so that's, that's, that's good in the sense that you don't need to stress about what you don't know before you start with those companies. And just know that they're going to put a lot of energy into looking into your um, attitude, your previous uh, experience at Cal Maritime, your track record with your uh, summer internship, and, and then having a really good understanding of what you hope to achieve for yourself. And most importantly, what are you going to do for the company that's going to leave it better off than, than before you were there? Nice, nice, definitely. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's, that's something that comes up a lot is like, what, what about the stuff that I don't know? And I think you, you touched on it perfectly. It's like the company's investing in you as well. And, and, you know, right. and so they're, they're going to train you the fine points of whatever their sector uh, need, needs to be and, done. And, and to that point, if you're, if you're a sophomore right now or a junior and you have an idea where you want to go work, reach out to those, those hiring managers and say, hey, what additional skill sets mm -hmm. do you want to see before I graduate? And then take that year and, and go uh, earn them or go learn those skill sets so that you're that, that much more attractive to the, uh, to the employer when you graduate. The, the sky's the limit. The, the maritime industry is one in which future employers want to put a, a ton of energy into their new hires and are excited to have you join the team. So don't wait until it's time to get hired. Reach out to them yep. beforehand and find out what they're looking for. Sweet. And that, that actually like kind of dovetails perfectly to my next question it was just kind of um, through your career, what are, um, whether it be endorsements or certifications and stuff that you have obtained that you've seen particularly beneficial in this career path that you've been on? Yeah, I think that goes back to, to service over self. So when you go to work for your new your new employer or your current employer, and you realize that like any business, there's challenges, what, what needs to happen for us to overcome those challenges? And when it comes to specific skills or or, or abilities, in, in my previous career at AmNav, early on, there was a need for uh, help in the shipyard and shoreside. And so there was an opportunity for me to go uh, back and get certified as a crane operator. And, you know, you raise your hand, you say, yes, you do it. And, and you're, you're leaving yourself um, more opportunities in the future, but you're also uh, helping the company that you work for fill that need. And so if you're in a shoreside role and they need somebody that's qualified in X, Y, Z, you know, find the course, ask for them to, to assist and you go into that course and, and take it. Yeah. Um, you know, the idea of really having the skills ahead of time or those, or those um, certificates ahead of time uh, may not always be possible. And mm -hmm. so you just want to be open-minded when you go to work for that new employer um, and you see the new industries or the new markets they're going into, you know, right now, automation, um, AI, um, in my world, uh, offshore wind as it's building up on the East coast and coming West, you know, the cadets are in a really good position to take note of what's happening with those companies that are playing in those arenas and are going through those growing pains and, and position yourself uh, so that you have the skill set that they're looking for when you're ready to graduate. Yeah, no, I think uh, looking at what the new markets might be and kind of what the trends of the industry are is, is definitely a, a great way to, to set yourself up to hit the ground running and, and make yourself stand out for sure. For yeah, candidate. yeah, yeah, it really it it, uh, it everything you just said is spot on. And and uh, the main the main thrust here is don't wait until you're, you know, two months out from graduating exactly. to start looking into all those yep. those those questions and and, and concerns um, start early and, and look often. Mm hmm. Definitely. I mean, shoot, you said it pretty like soft, sophomore can go up to someone at the career fair and it's like, they don't, they're not even looking really for anything maybe at the moment. Um, but they're just gathering information to, to learn more and, uh, you know, use, use the resources. Um, so thinking just broader, like when you, when you were in college and stuff, um, what were, what were some things that you might've worried about while you were in college and now what, once you're in your career, it's like, that was pretty trivial. And then what, uh, are some things that you wish you had known, in college that you would, you know, advise here on yourself, basically? Yeah, that's, so that, that's an interesting question. I, I, I had thought about it when you sent the, the note over in your email prior mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, what, what was trivial during your, your college years that were, that was big deal to you then. And I, I, I'm fortunate in that I can't really think of 
of, of too many. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I probably some immaturity had something to do with that where <laughs> I was just living in the moment and having yep. a really good time while I was at Cal Maritime as an undergrad. Um, but really understanding that you don't have to, you don't have to know everything right when you graduate. And actually that's a, a that's, that's, it's a really important note to make as a, as a newly minted third mate or a, a third assistant engineer. If, if you go out on that vessel, uh, instead of working hard to show them what you know, just be very open and even vulnerable and telling them, hey, I don't know this, this, or this, please teach me. This industry is one in which uh, there can be severe consequences if if you overstate your ability. And mm-hmm. so when you graduate, show that you're willing to learn, show that you're open to learning, and you'll be surprised at the opportunities that'll come around. And, and it'll be impressive to the people that are teaching you because they'll... Uh, They'll make it known to their leadership that, hey, this person sees the bigger picture and, and they're willing to, to grow into their role. And so I would say what was probably trivial for me was really thinking that I had to know everything uh, right when I graduated because mm-hmm. I quickly learned that I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was fortunate that I had a lot of good people and good uh, uh, captains and leaders teach me uh, what I didn't know and and were patient with me. So uh, keep that in mind when you graduate. You're uh, you're going into an industry with with uh, a really good uh, uh, head start with what Cal Maritime has taught you. But there's a lot more to learn from the boots on the ground folks that you'll be working with, and just uh, be really open minded and 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 ready to to take notes. Nice. Nice. Um, and then just the, the last question, um, and maybe it, it might be best to be uh, geared specifically more towards interns and stuff. And because we talked about that earlier, um, beyond the academic knowledge, and that's a, a big thing we get is what is something that makes a cadet attractive for internships and full time employment um, going through the application process, whether it be on resumes or the application material interviews, thing, things of that nature that would make them stand out. Sure. I, having a having a, a, a resume that that clearly describes their interests and what they've done so far, uh, we understand that you're in an undergraduate program, so we wouldn't expect your CV to be three pages long, <laughs> nor does anyone ever want to receive a three page exactly. long CV. But but we want to know what you've done both academically and outside of academics uh, to get really a better understanding of the person. Mm-hmm. You know, so much of what we do, regardless of what sector of the industry we're in, uh, is about relationships. And so we want to have a really good idea of the type of person you are. We have an idea of our team and we want to know how it's going to fit, how you're going to fit. And and if you're going to um, if you would uh, uh, get a lot of value out of joining our team and if we get a lot of value of having you join our team. So uh, to that point, just being um, a approachable and having the confidence to uh, approach the company, uh, that hiring manager or that person that's at the career fair, their their job is to engage with you and get to know you better and tell you about the company. And so take that opportunity. And even if it's over email or you found a company that uh, you really want to go um, work for, express that to them, send an email tell them why you want to be an intern or why you want to earn full employment with them and um, ask them what would make you more attracted to them over the next person. And, and it's, you know, it's an open book quiz. They should Mm -hmm. be more than willing to tell you uh, what they think that is for me. When I talk with people first, it's attitude. I just want to know that you have a good attitude. If you have a good attitude and you want to learn, then we can take anybody and turn them into whatever they'd like to be. Um, and then I already touched on it earlier, but service over self. If you make it clear that you're not asking, you know, what am I going to get out of it so much as I hope to leave the company or that vessel or that crew in a, in a better state than when I found them, then, you know, you're bound to succeed. Definitely. Definitely. Cool. No, that, I mean, and I think you hammered it home really well. It's like that initiative, willing to ask questions um, and then and then just learn as you go, because we're all we're all learning all the time. I mean, I'm sure you're learning every day still. Of new, of sure. New yeah. Things, and and going know? to graduate school, going going back to, to Cal Maritime for the graduate degree uh, really opened my eyes up to kind of resetting uh, my own um, um, idea of what I know and what I don't 
no. Mm -hmm. uh, there are amazing faculty uh, and lecturers and professors in the graduate program. The caliber of of classmates I had in the cohort uh, was amazing. I was definitely around some really talented people that have done a lot of great things in their career. And you realize almost like as an undergraduate that you don't know what you don't know. And yeah. it just gives you that reset to, to, to always be learning, always be open-minded and to, to be a sponge and, and learn what you can and then um, employ it where, where applicable. And um, you'll do good for yourself and for the company you work for. Sweet. Well, um, th those are all the questions that I have. Um, any last closing thoughts or anything? I mean, I think you touched on a bunch of great, great things. Uh, no, no, no real closing thoughts. You know, as an alum, um, I would just encourage uh, anyone in the maritime industry that that has a desire to, to talk about the industry and enjoys talking about the industry um, to go talk to junior highs and high schools. I found that uh, in the Bay Area alone, where Cal Maritime is headquartered, majority of cadets, I'm sorry, majority of high school students don't know what a cadet is or, or mm -hmm. what Cal Maritime is for that matter. And it really is the best kept secret within the um, Cal State University system. And it shouldn't be. We should be attracting um, more cadets than we can handle, which we already do. But we need to really focus as, as a community on getting the Cal Maritime name out there and continuing to drive it um, uh, home that the maritime industry is a, is a great industry to work in and um, anyone can do it. So, so get after it. Cool. Well, uh, Brad, th thank you very much. Um, you know, anyone listening, I'll link Brad's uh, contact information uh, on, the on our uh, career services website. So any questions you have for him, um, definitely, definitely reach out. Uh, I mean, this is part of building, building the alumni network too, as, as cadets and alums and all that good stuff. So Brad, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for the time, Ryan. And yeah, anyone feel free to reach out and uh, look forward to, uh, to the years to come and, and hopefully meeting more and more uh, Cal Maritime uh, graduates as, uh, as we all continue on in our careers. Sweet. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Ryan.